What's up everyone, KJ here. We got some more info and gameplay from the Nintendo Treehouse yesterday, and just like in the previous E3 discussion video, I will talk about what each game showed, and in the end, I will talk about my thoughts about the Treehouse um, yesterday on day three as a whole. So, let's get right into the discussion of what Nintendo showed on E3 day three. I almost put a two there. Sorry I didn't upload this yesterday, I had a freaking test that I had to do, and by the time I got home it was like four or five o'clock. The stream was already getting close to ending and I had to kind of go back through a five hour stream and sift through and get everything I needed because I actually did reveal some interesting stuff today. All right, first up is Splatoon 2. So the single player campaign, AKA the story mode was shown and Marie is the new guy for the campaign as we saw in the Splatoon 2 trailer. In the story mode, if you take damage, you don't die at first because you have special armor, but it can, cause it can regenerate as well. If you hear a noise in the background, my mom is uh, on the phone with someone and she's yelling pretty much, but sorry about that. Um, different weapons are also available for use in different levels. You know, after completing the stage for the first time with the weapon given to you, um, you can also complete the same stage with other weapons after that too. In certain levels, there are like rollers on like, they look like foam rollers, right? And if you shoot ink at them, they will roll out for all your ink, allowing you to cover large distances. You can also send them flying in the air as well. There are also new attacks with certain weapons. For example, the ink roller, it has a vertical strike, allowing you to cover areas in ink easier. And then the ink sniper as well. These are all, I don't know the names for these weapons, but if you, the roller, the sniper, excuse me. And then the sniper, when it's fully charged, its shots can pass through enemies and damage other things as well. Your weapons can also be upgraded by collecting power eggs. I think just like in the last game too, I'm not entirely sure because I never really played Splatoon, um, the first one. There are now rails you can grind in Splatoon 2. I don't know if that happens in Splatoon, but I, that's what I saw. Um, you can also jump from one rail to another. You can ride the rails as a squid, and you can shoot from the rails as well. After completing five stages on each area, the boss fight is also available, and the boss we were shown was the Octo Samurai, who has an ink roller of his own. The Octo Samurai also uses a bike and spin attacks to cover the hit on the surrounding area in ink. The Treehouse also showed some Turf War gameplay, and you can also spectate matches in Splatoon 2. Another mode the Treehouse showed was Rainmaker. You pretty much capture the flag or the Rainmaker, which is a weapon, and bring it to the other team's base. And there are also numbers at the top of the screen showing how close you are to the other team's base and the team with the lowest number wins if no one really can bring the Rainmaker to the opposing base successfully. Another mode that Treehouse showed was Tower Control. You have to move the tower through checkpoints to try to get to the opposing base and the lowest number also wins in this mode too. Another mode they showed was Splat Zones where you have to control a certain zone on the map for about 100 seconds and once it gets to zero, you win. Um, the next up is Ever Oasis for the 3DS. Now, uh... I actually have I actually got the demo for this game. It's really really fun. It's very short though, but it's very fun. The player character can have a room and their gender can be chosen by you. Other characters can be controlled in the game as well. Each character has a different ability. Clothing is available in the game, but it doesn't affect the stats. It's purely cosmetic. Um, the weapons and accessories do affect the stats though. Because there are various tribes in the game, certain characters and weapons are strong and weak to certain monsters. The Oasis can have shops that you are in charge of, and you and other Oasis residents can buy things there. Oasis residents can also give you side quests. You can organize your Oasis and also do certain tasks like tasks like sending residents out on expeditions to get resources for you as well as level them up. The Oasis can be leveled by getting more residents. Um, labyrinths are also available in Ever Oasis and their difficulties can be changed. So if you want an easy or a medium or hard, you can use slabs and you can change the difficulty. Items, rooms, colors, etc. are randomized in these labyrinths so no labyrinth is the same. Exit spots in the labyrinth allow you to leave and keep new items, but if you retire, you lose those new items. Um, there are sub-bosses and bosses in the labyrinths as well. There are also heal spots in the labyrinths, where you heal pretty much. Um, labyrinths have, also have exclusive treasures that you can't find anywhere else in the game. And pretty much the goal of the game is to improve the desert by making more oases, which is the plural, uh, which is like oasis plural. You didn't know. Um, the battle system is pretty much just running up and attacking enemies, and you can also like switch which enemy you want to attack. Fast travel and gardening are also functions available in the game, and as I said before, the demo is currently available. Definitely try it out it's on the Nintendo e 3DS eShop, so uh, yeah, definitely give it a shot. Next up is more gameplay from Super Mario Odyssey, and we actually saw that two players can now play Super Mario Odyssey at the same time. So I was actually saying that it would be kind of cool in my last E3 discussion video, or I think the one before that, one of those videos, if like, one person could control Mario, maybe another person could have a, 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 another Mario to control or even customize Mario, but in the two player that they showed us, one player controls Mario while the other controls his hat named uh, Cappy. Every kingdom in the Super Mario, I mean every kingdom in Super Mario Odyssey has ties to the wedding in some way, and Mario can also swim underwater for a limited time, I mean before a limited time because he can drown, and there are also tons of stuff to do in each area. Again, I'm really sorry if you hear noise in the background, really sorry. Um, 
Next up is more gameplay from Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS. I didn't know this, but apparently Metroid Samus Returns is a remake of an old Metroid title called Metroid 2. A new ability in Metroid Samus Returns is free aim. If you shoot the monster after melee countering it, it's a critical hit. The 3DS was chosen to have the, new, the Metroid remake because of its dual screens. 3DS's analog stick also allows you to free aim anywhere 360 degrees, just like the analog stick you move anywhere. The cinematics in the game are also something very interesting to see, especially in 3D. I don't really know about that because I barely even use the 3D on my 3DS. I just play games, so I mean, like, 3D or not, the game's probably going to be really sick. Um, you can also add pins to inaccessible areas on the map so you can revisit them re revisit them later and access, access them. You can also find out what icon on the map what each icon on the map means after you've already encountered it. As you progress through the game and defeat special bosses, um, you can unlock more and more Aeon powers and technology. Teleport stations allow you to return to the areas that you may not have fully explored. Um, next up is more gameplay from the first DLC pack from Breath of the Wild. In Master Mode, there are now Golden Enemies, which are the toughest enemies. The rest of the gameplay was pretty much just showing Trial of the Sword of Master Mode, which had already been shown on Day 2, so there wasn't really anything new out of it. Um, next up is some gameplay from Fire Emblem Warriors. On the game map, you can give commands to each character. Certain weapons can be more or less effective against other weapons. Um, there are also Easter eggs in the game that are from previous Fire Emblem games. Coliseum modes also showed again, where you pretty much have to fight heroes from Fire Emblem one-on-one, -on -one, but there are also opposing soldiers on their side that you have to fight as well. Um, there are two new Fire Emblem Amiibo, Krom and Tiki. I'm actually, I, I, I have never really played a Fire Emblem game, but considering Robin's Final Smash in um, Super Smash Bros., I do like Krom, so I may actually get the Krom Amiibo. Um, Tiki, I don't really know anything about, but hey, it's an Amiibo, I'm probably going to get it. Um, all the other Fire Emblem Amiibo will be compatible with Warriors as well. They haven't. The only one they haven't released so far is Corrin, but all the other ones I have. I have Marth, I have... I mean, let me check. I have Marth, Ike, Robin, Lucina, Roy. I have all those, because I, I... Yeah. Um... Next up is more gameplay for ARMS as well as some DLC for it, so it was actually an interesting presentation. Um, there are different training situations that you can play in the game, for example, like trading punches or don't get thrown were actually shown at the treehouse, and training in these situations can help you get better in the game, not only for the story mode, but it can also be a tremendous help playing with others and online as well. Um, the Grand Prix or Story Mode is also shown, and just like Classic Mode for Smash, you can choose what level you want to play the Grand Prix on. The easiest is 1, while the hardest is 7. Grand Prix gives you a backstory in each character, and the Treehouse also showed a new character coming to ARMS soon, Max Brass. Um, Headlock, a very challenging robot from the ARMS Test Punch, if you've ever fought against it, it's really annoying, was revealed to have been created in the ARMS Labs, and when Headlock takes over the body of an ARMS fighter, it can create duplicates of their ARMS, and use those duplicate ARMS as well. So, in addition to showing up sometimes online, Headlock can also sometimes be found while playing the Grand Prix, so, uh, I'm not I'm looking, I'm, I mean, I may be getting arms today, but I'm really not looking forward to fighting him. Please, 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 no. Because um, he was he was a nuisance. Like, he literally had, like, three people go up against him, and all of us got bodied. He was, like, level six. And we were, like, we were trying to hit him from all angles, and it was just so crazy. Um, back to Max Brass. He's supposedly the arms champ. Um, Brass's arms are actually made of championship belts, and Brass's special ability is not flinching when he buffs up his, buffs up, buffs up his body. Like, he'll inflate sort of his body. And he won't flinch from taking hits, um, sort of like uh, Master Money. Um, and his punches become permanent charge once his health is below 25%, sort of like Spring Man. Maybe they're related. I don't know. That would be actually kind of cool. Maybe Brass would be like the older brother of Spring Man. That would actually be kind of interesting if they were like related or connected in some sort of way. Um, Brass can also deflect punches like Spring Man with like that little deflect punching wave or like force field. Um, Brass is pretty much an all-around and more maneuverable Master Mummy, and Brass, along with a Spectre to move for arms, and more will be included in free, up free, free updates for arms throughout this year. I think the first update will have Spectre to mode, the second update will have Brass, and then more updates throughout the year will have probably more DLC as far as character stages, and other possibly game modes as well. Um, final thoughts. So... That's really it for the gameplay they showed on day three. I would say that the only con, there were very few cons today. Very few. Not like yesterday. No, I mean, not like day two, where it was like they showed like gameplay for games and didn't reveal that much new stuff. Like, it was only like really two. The first con was that the treehouse showed us some redundant stuff, but it wasn't as much as day two. Um, not every segment was redundant, but segments like, you know, the Breath of the Wild DLC and most of the Fire Emblem segment uh, was. You know, the only part that was actually new were the amiibo from that segment. Because, but other than that, we already knew the info for both of those segments because we saw it so much on day two. Everything else that we saw was new in some sort of way because it was either a new mode, a new character, a new ability or power, or just more new info for an upcoming game. The second con was that we weren't showed many of the games we would have wanted to see at this year's E3, like Smash the Switch, Animal Crossing, Kid Icarus, and so many other titles. We did see some amazing titles nonetheless, but it sucks that throughout the entire E3, Smash for the Switch, in addition to other games wanted, weren't talked about at all. I still have hopes 
I definitely have hopes, I still definitely have hopes, that we can get special directs or presentations for this game in the near future. But overall, today's Treehouse was, I mean, not today's Treehouse, because it's this actually the day after, but yesterday's Treehouse, day three's Treehouse, was awesome, and I enjoyed it mainly because we got to see a lot of new stuff instead of just the same games. Now, many games were shown again, however, new things were revealed for them, so it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like day two where, you know, people were in the comments were just like, smash, 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 smash. They're doing that on day three, too, but, like, in day two, a lot of people were just upset because they're like, we saw this already, stop showing it to us. But anyway... Um, so I'd say in terms of ranking, I'd say it's day one, day three, and then day two. Because day three actually revealed new stuff. Now, I think it was more of a strategic kind of thing because if they had revealed stuff, if they revealed all the new stuff on day two or day one, they wouldn't have had anything to really talk about on day two and day three, and it would have been even more boring. But, um... So, but anyway, because of all this, I still think that Sony has won E3, but Nintendo is definitely a close runner-up. You know, if Nintendo had showed us more new games, preferably the ones we were wishing to see at E3, then yes, Nintendo would have won E3 hands down all the way, right? But um, th that wraps up this discussion on day three for Nintendo at E3. Let me know in the comments below what your what your thoughts what your thoughts on yesterday's Treehouse are. When do you think we will get info on on up new games like Smash for Switch and more? Uh, did you like yesterday's treehouse? Did you like the new info given, or would you have wanted to see newer games? What games from yesterday's treehouse will you be getting, and why? And what do you think of Nintendo's E3 presentation and everything else overall? Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I'll see y'all later.